What's up, Wanderers Army, and welcome back to the WHL Game Day Experience Vlog Series. Tonight's video is featuring my hometown team, the Red Deer Rebels, going up against their division rivals, the Kootenai Ice. Shall we get the lowdown on the Rebels? Let's. Name, Red Deer Rebels. What year were they founded? The Rebels were founded in 1992 and recently celebrated their 25th season anniversary in the 2016-17 season. Arena, well, that will be the MX Centrum. And what's the capacity of it? I'll have you know that the capacity of the MX Centrum is 7,111 people. Fun fact about the Rebels, they won the Memorial Cup in 2001 in Regina over the Valdor Coreurs, 6-5 in OT, with Doug Lynch scoring the winner. Just giving you guys a scope of how big the Rebels' home arena is is as evidenced here as they have done renovations since 1990 into the building going places down the stairs trying to find my seat found said found said seat and this is not that bad for $26 as it's nearly front row. Just a short clip of the pregame festivities. And now the Rebels enter to the cheers of their fans wearing their all new white hockey jersey, which is obviously uh, kind of a copy. Of their burgundy jersey, but they want all the fans to be able to see it. Their alternate logo is most no, no fans don't get to see um, the alternate logo as much as they like. Personally, I can see the potential of both the burgundy version and the white version of this jersey to become the home and away jersey within the next few years. With the black and silver of the Rebels' inaugural season potentially coming back as. Uh, alternate jersey. First period face-off. Kootenai controls the puck and now meets Cam Hughes, a professional sports entertainer and motivational speaker who's brought in to pump up the hometown Rebels fans. And as you can see, he really gets into his job as a professional sports motivator and he's such a great person to bring in for these interdivision games. As you as the Ice and Rebels are divisional rivals, you can expect some fisticuffs with Cameron Housinger of the Ice going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brandon Cutler of the Rebels. Housinger winning the fight with a takedown with the Rebels mascot Wooly Bully enjoying the action. Now we get to see Cameron in action up close and personal as he decides to come and wire up the second fans in the second half. As you can see, he absolutely loves getting the fans on the way. He enjoys what he does, and that's what, what makes him personal. Here with me. Nothing much else happened in the first 20 as the first as the score uh, remain scoreless with the ice leading the Rebels in the shot clock 11 to 7 at the end of 20 minutes of play, which leads us into the first intermission. As you can see, the ice netminder McGovernor has some words uh, with the officials potentially regarding um, players in the freeze players coming into him. We don't know. As the, at the first intermission, as customary for me when attending these kinds of sporting events, I decided to take a walk and came across what I believe were youth teams playing shinny this inter intermission entertainment. As there was a Kiwi midget team sponsored by Go Dodge Auto and an and a female youth team as well, so yeah, it was good to see the kids getting to play on the play on the same ice as the Rebels. Now just a general view of the not yet rutted ice service awaiting the Rebels and Ice's return from the dressing rooms to the playing school 
second period behind a rather defensive game for this period. Both teams will return to the ice with the Rebels moving from right to left and the ice moving from left to right. Second period, very soft, should get us going right about now. And as you can see, the ice dump it in, trying to pressure the Rebels into making a defensive error. Rebels get it. Up nice and wow, that didn't take long for the Rebels to break this tie as Mason McCarty scored scores his 12th goal of the season with the assists going to off the track and re-spawning at the 143 mark of the second period. I can see McCarty just lets rip with a wicked wrist shot over the shoulder of the ice netminder McGovernor, which leads the Rebels gaining the advantage on the ice. As you can see, now they're setting up for the face off after the goal, which leads to the face off. Rebels controlling the punt. Here, trying to make sure see. Game of ice, the ice dumped back in. And that leads to this goal by the ice. The ice equalized 8 minutes and 20 seconds later as Alec Bear scores his 8th of the season unassisted. Lovely backhand move open to the Rebels goaltender Ethan Anders up, which left Bear with plenty of time to slot it past Anders. And it was just a good dump and chase play by the ice. Uh, Bear, just being the veteran over age four, he is. He waited for the rookie goaltender Anders to commit, which he did. And that makes uh, Coach Sutter kind of nervous at how the Rebels are playing face off. The Rebels are trying to forget about that last goal by immediately moving the puck into the offensive zone to generate some chances. Now the Ice have possession leading to this good, outstanding stand-up check by a Rebels defender. Kootenay gets a shot off, which is easily followed up by Anders. That certainly won't help as the Ice take the lead on a great passing play as Bolton Beloso finds the twine behind Anders with Helsinger and Smart getting the helpers on the ice's second goal of the game. It was a great passing play that led to that goal. Helsinger found Smart, Smart found Beloso, and the ice find a one goal lead courtesy at that goal. Face off. As you can see, the ice are controlling the puck here. The Rebels get down to their offensive zone. And the Rebels are really pressing right now, trying to solve McGovernor. But that leads to this happening, which is... Uh, the Rebels penalty with Sam Bouillon serving a minor cross check in that place, being 21st in the Western Line League on the power play, sitting at 14.6%. Only the Prince George Cougars being the worst ranked team at 12.8%. On the power play, Coach Sutter is not happy about that with the mistake made by a rookie defenseman. Face off to the right commanders. The ice win the draw and immediately leash set up shot. Leading to this shot from the point being turned aside by Anders, leading to three points by the Rebels penalty coming in, which is operating at 76.1%, which is good for 14th in the lead. The ice attacking relentlessly leads 
from their third straight goal in the period. This time the power play does the damage, with Peyton Krebs scoring his fourth goal of the season, assisted by Brett Davis. It was a lovely pass from Davis that left Krebs wide open with no one around to defend him, and he fought it over Andrew's shoulder. And as you can see, Anders is really uh, disgusted with himself for allowing that pool. And face off, which leads the Rebels trying to get back into this game potentially by sniffing out some offensive chances here. That leads to uh, the Rebels going outside. Um, so that uh, ends the second stance with the ice leading the Rebels by a score of three to one. With the Rebels being tremendously outshot by the ice on the shot clock, as um, uh, as the ice outshot the Rebels twenty four to sixteen at the end of two. Third period time with the Rebels faithful hoping for a miracle. Will we see one hot happen? Let's find out. Face off. The Rebels immediately testing the ice as they look to find a way back into this game. The ice get the puck the ice. The Rebels gain control, which leads to an offside. The Rebels are getting desperate as they look to uh, get a shot off here, which McGovern easily gobbles up. As the Rebels and Ice being divisional rivals, things were bound to get chippy, turkey, and downright nasty. Boy, did they ever, as the Rebels gain a penalty due to Austin Pratt incurring a roughing line. The Ice get another chance in the power play to seal the deal. The Cans, if they can score, shot the Ice net under the governor, keeping the by skating in the stoppage between plays. Which leads to face off. Lucky winner of the 50 50 came home with over $7,000. The Rebels have pulled their netminder Anders to see if they can, if they can generate anything. anything. Yeah. Out the goal. Nope. The Ice celebrate their 3 1 victory over the Rebels. Beating the Rebels in back-to-back -back games, coming from behind in Cranbrook to win 4-3 in the third on Friday. And then by beating the Rebels 3-1 in the second game of the third at home. Three stars of the game were first star from Ethan Krebs, second star from Alec Bear, and third star from the Rebels, Ethan Anders. Holly Mill presented post-game fireworks, featuring the song Believer by Imagine Dragons. And even though the though that the Rebels lost, most of the crowd stayed after the game to witness the pyrotechnic display. And I must admit, I love the work that they put into post-game fireworks. I love that, the fact that they chose Believer by Imagine, by Imagine Dragons as the song to accompany the fireworks. And it's great to see that. A really great band for getting to do in both uh, junior level sports as well as professional sports as some people start using the, their songs as one up songs, uh, going out on the ice, whatever surface songs. So, yeah, shall we rate the day? Let's do it. First up, facilities. Considering that the Centrium was built in the early 90s and was renovated in time for the paintball season, which increased the fan experience. I'm giving this a solid 4.5 star of 5. Next up, at contrary to the last game of this series against the Pats, this game was a beast of divisional rival. The fans brought their A game, the Rebels brought in the fan favorite Cameron Hughes, which means I'm going to give this a solid 5 out of 5 stars. Food, stuck with the hot dog, went with a Gatorade this time around, spent probably $9 on food and drink. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst, so I'll give this a solid 4 out of 5 stars. And finally, the cost. Was it worth it? I spent $26 on a near front row ticket, $9 on the food and drink, which brings the grand total spend to $35. It was worth it. 
Because I can't to see Karen Hughes in person. See the Rebels' new fork jersey and enjoy the post-game fireworks presented by Ollie Mill. So I'm giving this a solid 5 out of 5 stars rating. Stay tuned to the channel for the next OHL Game Day Experience video, which is going to be going to be the December 2nd game when the Calgary Hitmen come to come to the MX Centrium to take on the Rebels. Check out the channel's social media channels down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And follow Cameron at, at, at Cameron Cheers on Instagram and Twitter. Links will be down below in the description. And with that being said, I encourage you to get out, enjoy some junior hockey. Also, I forgot to mention, if you guys have any uh, suggestions regarding uh, future videos in this series, comment them down below as I would love to get out there to experience other arenas, other uh, junior teams in, in the dub, the Q, or even the OHL. So yeah, that being said, wander out and hopefully you guys get out and enjoy some hockey.